He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. America, Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Republicans may not have the votes needed to undertake an impeachment inquiry. Let me tell you something, and that involves Joe Biden. Any Republican who votes against supporting an impeachment inquiry, we will give you their names and you should remove them from office. The information's overwhelming, and if they don't have guts to take care of business, or they're busy promoting themselves in some marginal district, I have no stomach for it. The country comes first, not their political futures. I'm quite serious about this. The Constitution provides a remedy, and even if the senators aren't going to vote for it, we'll take down their names too. When I started in this business, talk show hosts, even national talk show hosts, refused to get involved in campaigns. I changed all that with the Tea Party over 10 years ago and even before, where I got involved in a lot of campaigns. Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Mike Lee, I can't even begin to remember everybody. Um, although Rubio doesn't talk to me anymore. For, I, I have no idea why these people do what they do. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm too hot. I don't mean that way. I mean this way. All right, but that's not what I want to get into. And by the way, in Florida, I mean, the Gulf Coast got whacked not long ago, getting whacked again starting tomorrow morning. It's so nerve-wracking. I understand that. And so um, you're going to see the leadership abilities yet again of DeSantis. Not talking, not the gift of gap, not how to turn a phrase, but you're going to see this guy, he's just, he is what he is. He's a, uh, he grabs things by, by the horns and he wrestles them to the ground. But let's get moving here. I want to read something to you because I doubt you've heard most of this. I don't want to analyze it. Judge Tanya Chutkin The judge who just happened to get the Trump case, supposedly about January 6th. See, a judge is supposed to be a referee. Even more than that, a judge is to ensure that the rights of the defendant are protected. There's many ways a judge can do that. Through motions that other people file, but also just to ensure that the courtroom is handled properly. And that would include setting a date for a trial. She set the date for March 4th. I'm going to get into some more detail. But let's read what took place in that courtroom according to the New York Slimes, who had 7 or 12 journalists on the case. Really just two. Alan Fiera and Glenn Thrush. The federal judge 
overseeing former President Trump's prosecution on charges, conspiring to overturn the 2020 election, set a trial date on Monday for early March, rebuffing Mr. Trump's proposal to push it off until 2026. I'll break it all down. Just bear with me. The decision by Judge Tanya S. Chudkin to start the trial on March 4th amounted to an early victory for prosecutors. Can you imagine that? Who asked for January 2nd. But it potentially brought the proceeding into conflict with three other trials that Mr. Trump is facing, underscoring the extraordinary complexity of his legal situation, the intersection of prosecutions, this campaign to return to the White House. The district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia, has proposed taking Mr. Trump to trial on charges of tampering with the election in the state on March 4th as well. Another case in Manhattan in which Mr. Trump's been accused of more than 30 felonies connected to non-disclosure agreements uh, in the run-up to the 2016 election has been scheduled to go to trial on March 25th. So that would be two trials the same day and then another trial on the 25th while the other two trials are going on. And if the trial in Washington lasts more than 11 weeks, it could bump up against Mr. Trump's other federal trial on charges of illegally retaining classified documents after he left office and obstructing the government's efforts to retrieve them. Now, notice the bias in the article to begin with, regurgitating the charges by the prosecutors. But let's go on. That trial is scheduled to begin in Florida in late May. The March 4 date set by Judge Chunkin for the federal election case at a hearing in federal district court in Washington is the day before Super Tuesday, when 15 states are scheduled to hold Republican primaries or caucuses. Judge Chunkin said that while she understood Mr. Trump had both other trial dates scheduled next year and, at the same time, was running for the country's highest office, she was not going to let the intersection of his legal troubles and his political campaign get in the way of setting a date. She said, Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work regardless of his schedule, Judge Chunkin said, adding that there's a societal interest to a speedy trial. All right, let's stop right there. The speedy trial is for the defendant, not the societal interest that this judge claims to claims to know about. You're a judge, let alone a federal judge. That's your courtroom. And it's your damn job to make sure that when you set a date for trial, that the defendant has an opportunity to actually defend himself. An opportunity to go through all the information the government has amassed. Because the framers understood how powerful the government could become. In the case of Washington, D.C., it's something like 12 million documents. God knows how many witnesses. Just to read through the material, let alone prepare your case with exculpatory arguments and so forth and so on. The idea that it would take six months is a lie and a disgrace, and she knows it. She's not interested in due process by her own statement. She said, Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work regardless of his schedule. Regardless of his schedule? How about regardless of the government's schedule? Stick with me. The government decided, the Department of Justice, the Biden regime, Jack Smith, to bring two federal cases virtually back to back. They knew that this would create a conflict. Judge Chunkin knows that he creates a conflict. Now, here's the big point. Judge Chunkin also knows, being a radical Marxist bomb thrower, which I'll I'll prove later, that Judge Cannon in Florida has already set a trial date for May, which might be pushed back even further. May, the documents case. Now, the Department of Justice and Smith, the first federal case they brought, was the documents case. The second case they brought was the January 6th case. The judge in the documents case in Florida set May as the date for the trial. Chunkin on Monday set March. 
two months before May as the date for her trial, knowing full well that the other court had already set a date in May involving discovery, involving all the motions activities, involving what you do to prepare for trial. She purposely set the date of the trial, even put aside Super Tuesday, to interfere with the Florida case. She did it on purpose. She jumped the line. Her case is the second case. And now she's interfering with the timing of the first case. Nobody's brought this out. This is important. She, over the weekend, no doubt, or even before, she looked at a calendar. She's looking at the dates. She knows when these Republican primaries are. She knows where she can do maximum damage, March 4th, the day before Super Tuesday. But she also knows that the Speedy Trial Act and the right to a speedy trial is not a matter of societal interest, per se. It's a right the defendant has if the defendant chooses to use it. And the speedy trial provision of the Constitution doesn't trump the right to due process. Trump's lawyer, I'll get into this in a moment, says, we can't prepare for this on time. And she said, you got to meet your obligations. That's how sinister and diabolical this fraud is in a black robe. There is no damn way she should have ever been a judge, nominated by Obama, slips through the Republicans and the Judiciary Committee. There is no damn way this woman should be a federal judge. None whatsoever. Her grandfather in Jamaica, her ancestry is Jamaican, her grandfather in Jamaica was a well-known Marxist activist. In fact, he was so committed to overthrowing the government in Jamaica that for a period of time they put him in prison. She's a chip off the old block. It's like the DA in Atlanta. Her father was a Black Panther revolutionary, another Marxist, a domestic terrorist group. She's another one, chip off the old block. Then you got Bragg in Manhattan, installed by George Soros. And then you have Jack Smith, the invisible hand, behind trying to destroy the Tea Party and conservative groups to help deliver elections to Obama. That's the lineup. And then we have Chunk in the judge. Let's go on here so you understand what an abomination this is. She says, while she understood Mr. Trump at both other trial dates scheduled next year and at the same time was running for a country's highest office, she was not going to let the intersection of his legal troubles and his political campaign get in the way of setting a date. Not let them get in the way. She's setting dates to purposely make it impossible for him to campaign and even more to have due process. We have a whole Bill of Rights. We have a constitutional system. It's been around a lot longer than this judge. And it is extraordinary. It's actually unimaginable that she would bend the rules and use her courtroom to treat a former president and a candidate for president this way. And Jack Smith is laughing. He got a date that he wanted. Jack Smith is running that courtroom. Jack Smith said, I want a trial in January. Jack Smith brought up the, the right to a speedy trial. She's regurgitating what he said. And then they pretend that Trump's not above the law. Not above the law. He's literally facing six lawsuits at the same time. Six. Four criminal, one civil in, in New York, and another civil in New York. Here's what she says. Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work regardless of his schedule. Judge Chunkin said, adding that there's a societal interest to a speedy trial. Her job is to make sure the defendant has a fair trial. Notice she never said that once. Mr. Trump has now been indicted, they write, by grand juries four times in four places, Washington, New York, Atlanta, and Florida. Prosecutors have been jockeying for a position. All of them are trying to find time for their trials, not only in relation to one another, but also against the backdrop of Mr. Trump's crowded calendar. 
the candidate leading the field of the Republican Party's 2024 presidential nomination. The only decisions they're making about that is to try and set dates that are most damaging to Trump. They're not trying to avoid any type of election scenario. See, Chunkin is such an idiot. She's such a bomb thrower. She's such a disgrace that she can't even hide it. Well, Judge Chunkin noted that she had spoken to the judge in Manhattan case. Hear this? It remained unclear how the judges, prosecutors, and defense teams would address the problem of scheduling four criminal trials next year as Mr. Trump is campaigning. They want her to go first. Why? Raise your hand. Because they know the lunatics out there, backed by dark money, are pushing Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. That is the lie that they can prevent Donald Trump from running. If he's charged, which he has been, and certainly if he's convicted, just one count. That's what Chunkin's doing. I've got a lot more to say. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios, and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. You know, I was on this morning on Fox with uh, Dana Perino and Brett Baer, just sitting in for Bill Hemmer. I've never done that show. Brett asked me to come on, and I said, okay, I want to make this point that I make, and I'm making to you now. And it requires further elucidation, so stick with me. But what's amazing is, as I explain these things, as somebody who's worked at the Department of Justice at the highest levels, and I see things other people don't see because of my experience, because it's not just March 4th, the day before Super Tuesday, that would be bad enough, but that she jumped the line as the second case to become the first case, which I'm going to explain more. Nobody, even after I was on in the morning, reported that in any of the news platforms during the course of the day, not just on Fox, anywhere. And this is a key fact. This is a key issue that people need to understand. That's why you're here. I'm I'm, I'm convinced of it. Because you know what we say on the radio here is not going to be said anywhere else. But it is a crucial fact, and I want to dig into this more, why it matters. I'll be right back. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. The establishment's worst nightmare. Mark Levin. Call in now. 877-381-3811. 
Judge Trunkin's worst nightmare because I know exactly what the hell she's doing and who she is. The New York Times relevant part. As part of the hearing on Monday, John F. Laro, a lawyer for Mr. Trump, previewed some of his defense case identifying several motions that he and his colleagues, Todd Blanche, planned to file on Mr. Trump's behalf. Mr. Laro said he could file a motion as soon as next week, arguing that Mr. Trump was immune to the charges, given that the indictment against him covers a period when he serves as the nation's commander-in-chief. Mr. Laro also said he was considering attacking the charges with a so-called selective prosecution motion. That motion, he said, would argue that Mr. Trump's election interference indictment brought by a special counsel appointed by the Biden administration had been filed at least in part as retaliation for the federal investigation of the Hunter Biden President Biden's son, which began in earnest during the Trump administration. Mr. Laro told Judge Chunkin that he was planning to challenge each of the three conspiracy counts in the indictment brought against Mr. Trump earlier this month by the Office of Special Counsel. Those counts accused Mr. Trump of, pl- of uh, plotting to defraud the United States, to disrupt the certification of the election, and so forth and so on. Laura said, in our view, this is a political prosecution. Still, the issues... I just wish... All right, let me go. So the issues surrounding the schedule of the trial took center stage at the 90-minute hearing, which Mr. Smith attended. Oh, the great Mr. Smith attended? Oh, wow. Prosecutors working for Mr. Smith have said in court papers that the government could take four to six weeks to present its case to the judge, with Mr. Trump's lawyers estimating a roughly similar amount of time. That timetable would push the trial well past March 25. The date that New York Justice Juan Merchant, another radical Democrat, has set for the Manhattan trial and could edge close or even beyond the May 20 date set for Mr. Trump's federal trial in Florida. You see what I mean about her jumping the line? Trunkin, she wants to be first. It's not out of pettiness, it's out of strategy. If you're a partisan hack judge, which she is which I'll get to in a minute. Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney, signaled recently he'd be open to seeing the trial date for the Manhattan case moved, provided Justice Merchant agreed. Lucian Chalfin, a spokesman for the New York court system, and it said in a statement, Justice Merchant and Judge Chutkin, ready for this, spoke last Thursday regarding their respective upcoming trials. At this time, there is nothing further to impart regarding the people of the state of New York versus Donald Trump. Notice Judge Chunkin didn't talk to her federal colleague. She didn't make a call down to Florida and tell her, as best we know, I'm going to go first. You may have to move your trial even further. Because the Democrat judges are working together. And I'm going to give you another example of this in a footnote here. When President Trump was in this courtroom a few weeks ago, if not a month ago, to have the charges read against him by the magistrate in that courtroom, three federal judges were sitting in the back, all appointed by Obama, all Democrats, including the chief judge of the district court in Washington, D.C. Why were they sitting there? That's shockingly unethical in my view. Because let me tell you a little secret. I touched on this the other day. I've been around that courthouse, I used to be around it, a lot for appellate cases and so forth involving landmark legal. And there is a a lunchroom, there's a cafeteria. Now, there are judges, they try and, you know, mingle with each other, even for lunch, if they're not eating at their own desk and so forth. But the radical left-wing judges are a cabal on that court. And you better believe that if this judge, Chunkin, is willing to pick up the phone to call the Democrat state judge in New York, she's been commiserating with the Obama judges in Washington, D.C. to try and figure out the best way to become the first case And not just screw Trump on Super Tuesday, but screw the judge in in Florida 
for reasons I'll get to again in a moment. You understand all this, Mr. Producer? This is the sickening intrigue that's taking place. It's sickening. You won't hear this from the New York Times or the Washington Post. This is what's going on. In the federal case, Mr. Trump's lawyers began complaining two weeks ago about the amount of evidence the trial uh, would have they have to wade through as part of the discovery process when they first made the request to po- po- postpone the trial until April 2026. Mr. Laro, Trump's lawyer, echoed that position in court on Monday. He took a sometimes aggressive tone in declaring that his client deserved a fair trial, no different than any other American. He said for a federal prosecutor to suggest that we could go to trial in four months is not only absurd, it's a violation of the oath of justice, which it is. We cannot do this in time frame the government has outlined. In their own court papers, prosecutors had pushed back against Mr. Laro's protests, about burdensome discovery, noting that much of the material, listen to this, was publicly available or known to Mr. Trump. It's known to Mr. Trump. Millions of pages, it's known to Mr. Trump, having come from his 2020 presidential campaign, which all of which he memorized, you see. Or from political action committees associated with it. Now that is the stupidest ass argument I've ever heard, but that was good enough for Chunkin. Molly Gaston, one of the prosecutors in the case, added a few new details to the portrait of the discovery evidence on Monday. Know that it, even though the total number of pages, not documents, excuse me, I'm correction, correcting myself, pages had reached nearly 12.8 million pages, the defense could go through it electronically with keyword searches. If a defense lawyer does that, they would be disbarred. You don't do keyword searches. You don't even know what you're looking for exactly. You scrutinize each and every page of each and every document to see what the government, why the government's using that document or that information and what you can find that's exculpatory. You don't do guesswork. Oh, let me look at the headers. Ms. Gaston also said the government had created a file of about 300 key documents. That served to annotate the 45-page indictment prosecutors filed against Mr. Trump earlier this month. It's essentially a roadmap to our case, she said. A defense lawyer has to do more than follow the prosecution's roadmap to their case. The prosecution does not control the courtroom, and the prosecution sure as hell doesn't control what the defense is doing for their client. but not in Judge Chunkin's courtroom. What did Ms. Gaston's colleagues? Boy, how many lawyers do you need? A lot, apparently. Thomas P. Wyndham told Judge Chunkin that the discovery evidence would include a limited amount of classified information, including about five to ten sensitive documents, totaling fewer than 100 pages, and 125 transcripts of interviews with a witness during which classified issues were discussed. So... Let me tell you how it works if you're a good lawyer. You collect all the information that the government's required to give to you. They're required to give you all their evidence, not part of it. Why is that? So you can go through it with headers? So you can use their software? So you can be told, here's our roadmap, this is what you need to look at? No! You're looking for everything and anything to undermine the government's case, to defend your client. There may be things that the government doesn't want you to see. There may be exculpatory information that has nothing to do with what the government's arguing. It's your turn as a defense lawyer. It's your turn. The government's had all the years it's wanted Millions and millions of dollars, 60 lawyers and law clerks. Now it's your turn. It's the turn of the two, three, four lawyers who get all this crap. And by the way, it's not only this information, they have a right to go out and get other information to present it during the course of a trial. And this judge, just think, is you don't have to be a lawyer, is basically giving them five months to do it all. Why? There's no hurry. There's not going to be any violation of any statute of limitations with Hunter Biden. 
They didn't show any Harry there. It's the same damn Department of Justice. We know why. Because this is an abomination. Which is why I'm taking the time to go through it with you. I'm not even close to done. If you're bored by this, you're going to want to tune out because this is going to be most of the show as I move from point to point. So, the article goes on. In seeking to persuade Judge Chunkin to move quickly to trial, one of the government's prosecutors, Gaston, reminded her that Mr. Trump had repeatedly attacked the integrity of the court and the citizens of D.C. on social media, a ways that could affect the case's jury pool. Now that, that is precious. Given all the leaks coming out of the government, that is precious. We need to hurry up, you see, because... Trump won't keep his mouth shut. One has nothing to do with the other. But the government has leaked all kinds of information in the documents case and in this case. At a hearing last month, Judge Tunkin warned Mr. Trump she would not tolerate him using social media posts to intimidate witnesses or taint potential jurors. Yeah, that's because all the Democrats in Washington, D.C. are hanging on true social and everything that Donald Trump has to say, Mr. Maduro. It's a farce. During the hearing on Monday, Judge Chunkin sought to calm Mr. Trump's lawyer, Mr. Lauro, cautioning him twice to turn down the temperature when he was speaking. That's right. You got to go along for the ride there, pal. Don't be emotional and passionate. Don't be upset. Lawyers never do that, do they, Mr. Beduzzi? I don't know. Clarence Darrow did it all the time, considered one of the greatest lawyers of all time. Alan Dershowitz was taking on some of the biggest cases in the country. He's emotional, Patrick. Mr. Loro, please settle down. I know you don't like what's going on. Too bad. At one point, she appeared upset by the way that Mr. Loro and his filings about the trial schedule had cited Powell versus Alabama, landmark 1932 Supreme Court decision that reversed the convictions of the Scottsboro boys, nine young black men who were falsely accused of raping a white woman. Judge Chunkin pointed out that the that Mr. Trump would face trial in seven months after he was indicted, compared with only one week in the Alabama case. But it, really, what's the difference? There weren't 12.8 million pages of documents. Were there, Judge Chunkin, in the Scottsboro case? There weren't hundreds of witnesses in the Scottsboro case. Were there, Judge Chunkin? I think it's you who are comparing apples to oranges. That's the article. Now, what do you do about this? We already know some of the motions that Mr. Lauro is going to file. What do you do about this? This is what I think of these bastards. Rip that up right there. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You file an anti-suit injunction. Mark, what's an anti-suit injunction? That's a very good question. I was never involved in this because I never faced circumstances like this. An anti-suit injunction is an interim order issued by a court in one jurisdiction that prohibits a litigant like the federal government, the Department of Justice, Jack Smith, from initiating or continuing parallel litigation in another jurisdiction. I told you that Judge Chunkin jumped the line. I told you that when Judge Cannon in Florida in the documents case set her date in May, Judge Chunkin should have taken that into consideration. Well, she did. That's why she decided March was the date that she needed to do this. The government asked for January. And she knew she couldn't do January. She'd be laughed off the federal bench. She should be laughed off the federal bench anyway. But she also knew she couldn't do April or May because that's too close to Judge Cannon in Florida in the big documents case. So she chose March 4th. Basically saying that Her decision was, well, she was Solomon, don't you know? 
that both sides were too extreme. Now, she handed a complete victory to Jack Smith. <clears throat> complete victory. Judge Chunkin does not want a fair trial. Judge Chunkin does not want a trial based on evidence. Judge Chunkin would have worked out very, very well in Stalin's regime. She goes through the motions. She's a pretend judge with a pretend prosecutor. There'll be a pretend jury. There will not be due process. Now, I want to continue this, this anti-suit motion. What should happen next? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios, and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. I don't have enough time to get into more of this issue on the anti-suit injunction. I will do that after the top of the hour, so don't leave. Don't leave. But in the New York Post, John Levine, judge in the January 6th case, is a scoring of Marxist revolutionaries. D.C. judge Tanya Chutkin, the judge assigned to former President Trump's multiple indictments stemming from the 2020 election, is the scorn of a family of revolutionary Marxists in her native Jamaica. She's an Obama appointee. Her grandfather, Frank Hill, a Jamaican communist revolutionary, who along with his brother Ken were briefly jailed by the island's British governor during World War II over suspicions of subversive activities. So her grandfather and her uncle were Marxists trying to overthrow the government there. Hill is the father of Noel Hill, Judge Trunkin's mother, public records show. Frank, along with his brother Ken Hill and fellow comrades Richard Hart and Arthur Henry, were expelled from the People's National Party of Jamaica for espousing communism, according to local Jamaican media. Comes from a long line of communists. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. So we're moving along here. Stick with me. This is like a story. A tragedy, actually. So two cases have been brought by the same prosecutor, the same Department of Justice, against the same defendant, among others, Donald Trump. We now have this case, January 6th, in Washington, D.C., where the judge has played politics with the setting of the trial date. She jumped the line to push her case in front of the case that was originally brought. That's the documents case. Where all the know-nothing former federal prosecutors say, now this is a real case. Or the former Attorney General, Bill Barr, complete disgrace. This is the case. 
So you're Judge Cannon, and you're sitting down there in Florida, and you're thinking to yourself, holy crap, I've got a case here. I've already set a trial date in May. The case here literally involves nine months of videos and 1.1 million documents. That's according to the government. There could be more. So again, defense has a right to make their own case without being directed by the government or just using the information the government gives. So they want to look at all the government information plus more. They want to conduct depositions. Maybe of some of the people the government spoke to, maybe some others. Can't get that done in four or five months in one of these cases. So what Judge Trumpkin did, being the Marxist bomb thrower that she is, who should really be removed from the bench. If our justice system was working, she'd be thrown the hell off the bench. She would. She's a disgrace. A disgusting disgrace. So what Chunkin did is basically tell Judge Cannon, what are you going to do about it? Screw you. I'm going first. I picked two months after the government asked and two months before your trial. And so if my trial here in Washington happens to bleed into your trial, you move the date. Or if the discovery from my case, which is going to come first now, interferes with discovery based on the calendar that you set in Florida before I set my calendar, that's your damn problem. You move your case. Because Trunkin knows that this is a kangaroo court. And she is the head kangaroo. And they want to ram through a trial as fast as they can. They want to get at least one count a conviction. Let loose the nut jobs on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, or just, they believe, and it could, critically damage Trump and his campaign. We've never seen anything like this in history, but here we are. Rather than moaning and groaning about it, what do you do about it? Well, Judge Chunkin has now undermined a federal judge in Florida. We have no information that she spoke to Judge Cannon about what she was planning on doing. I would bet the House, although I'm not, that she never spoke to Judge Cannon other than to maybe let her know what her decision was because there's no way Judge Cannon would agree to going second after she already set the trial date. And before the trial, obviously, she sets all kinds of discovery dates and deals with a bunch of motions. Now she has to deal with what Judge Chunkin did in Washington, D.C. So what do you do? Brought by the same prosecutor. Brought by the same Biden Department of Justice. Approved by the same Attorney General. Garland, they all know what they're doing. They all know that they got a great choice with this judge in Washington, D.C. Now, what do they do based on everything I've just told you? I know what I would do. And I talked about it this morning on Fox. And I want to thank my buddy Dan Bongino. I think... I'm told he mentioned this and discussed it because he's a smart dude. He's also a very honorable guy. Well, what do you do? If you're Donald Trump's lawyers, or you're the lawyers for the co-defendants, you file the anti-suit injunction with Judge Cannon in Florida. That case was first. Not because Judge Cannon made it first, but because the Department of Justice and the special counsel made it first. That's the first case they brought. That's the first case they brought. It's the first in the hierarchy of cases. Judge Chunkin showed no respect and no comedy, C-O-M-I-T-Y, towards Judge Cannon or that entire process in Florida. She stomped all over it. Purposely. She rolled them. She jumped ahead of them. This is what nobody's understanding. Now hopefully everybody's going to understand it. And she did that purposely. 
So they need to file the Trump lawyers and the other lawyers, somebody, an anti-suit injunction. It's an interim order seeking an interim order from the court in one jurisdiction, in this case Florida, that prohibits a litigant, in this case the prosecution, Jack Smith and anyone else from the Department of Justice, from continuing parallel litigation in another jurisdiction. They brought the case first involving the documents. The judge in Florida has already made decisions on the date. She's already making decisions about discovery, classified information, videos, and so forth. And Judge Chunkin, being the Marxist bomb thrower that she is, who should never have a judgeship, not here or anywhere else, she jumps the line, tries to override what Cannon is doing because she wants to get Trump convicted in Washington, D.C. on January 6th to spare all the nut jobs on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And if that doesn't work, you're going to have a man who's said to be convicted now running for president. How does that play out for a second? You hear Chris Christie on TV all the time? He doesn't care that Stalinist tactics, even worse, are being used by the Department of Justice, by this judge, by the special counsel. He doesn't care that what went on in Georgia is a complete travesty. He doesn't care that what Alvin Bragg has done is universally condemned. He doesn't care about the venue shopping. He doesn't care about the trial dates. He doesn't care about the fact that the Fifth Amendment in due process is impossible to achieve under these circumstances for Donald Trump. He gets up there and he says, Donald Trump can't win. He can't be dealing with six to eight week trials. And I know I was a U.S. attorney in the fifth biggest district in the country for seven years. I know. We can't have that. So Chris Christie is a quizzling. He's a coward. But worse than that, he would contribute to this destruction of our justice system. Just because he wants to be president, he's no chance. He's hated more than any Republican in the race. Nikki Haley exploits this too. She's more clever than Chris Christie. She's not a complete blunderbust. But she doesn't condemn this process, ever. Mike Pence. He's walking around like Caesar. Pretending to be Reagan, but he's walking around like Caesar. Like he's conquered something. He's done some great thing. He doesn't condemn this process. He's contributed to this process. Maybe there's others too. I just can't remember. Now back to the law. It's going to take a lot of guts because the media, the Democrats, and the rest have already trashed this judge in Florida. But she is the smartest of the bunch. She's also the least partisan of the bunch, as far as I can tell. But she's a Trump appointee. So what? This other idiot is an Obama appointee. Last time I checked, Judge Cannon's grandfather wasn't a Marxist either. What Judge Cannon needs to do is issue an order to the Department of Justice and to the prosecutors involved in this case uh, to cease the litigation that they brought in the District of Columbia. And she needs to do that so the defendants, particularly the former president who's running for president, can do one trial at a time and actually have a shot of staying out of prison. Actually have a shot of having his due process rights recognized. Rights that are in the Bill of Rights that apply to each and every one of us, Judge Chunkin, with your damn stupid lectures. I'm going to be hanging on Judge Chunkin like a bad rash, Mr. Bidish. In fact, God forbid if there is a trial that begins, I'm going to be sitting in there from time to time if they let me in, because there's going to be a 
a crash of reporters to get in there, and I'm sure I'm not on the short list. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, what's important about the Anti-Suit Injunction Act, as I study this now, is you have an immediate right to an appeal. You don't have to wait for the trial. Why would you? You're trying to prevent overlapping trials that prevent a defendant from having the right to a real defense. And Judge Chunkin gave it away when she said, every defendant has to make it work. I'm setting this date, and you make it work. And not only that, she says, the right to a speedy trial is a societal right. No, the right to a speedy trial, America, is an individual right. It can actually be waived by a defendant. She's asserting it here on behalf of the prosecution and government to destroy Trump's chances of defending himself. Defending himself in a courtroom that's going to be filled with Democrats. It'll be like a Democrat convention. It'll be like... It'll be like the old Roman Colosseum where Trump's throw to the Democrat lions. I'm not kidding. Chris Christie's okay with that. You know, I can't deal with this. I mean, come on. Shut up, you big fat slob. Mr. what, 3%? And Nikki Haley really should know better. She's willing to almost say and do anything. I'm sick of these desperate politicians. I really am. Now, so the Anti-Injunction Act should be filed. We're talking about, you see, it could be complicated if it's used federal to state courts, but that can happen. But certainly, federal to federal court, where the prosecutor's the same guy, where the prosecutor brought, first brought the case that's being heard in Florida, where the date was set first in Florida, where discovery was first set in Florida, where issues of classified information were first determined in Florida, and then in over the top comes Chunkin. Now, either she's the dumbest person to ever ever have a black robe, or she's the most radical Marxist bomb thrower, or she's both. And I vote for both. So that needs to be filed. And I have to admit, Judge Cannon would have to have a lot of guts, but what's right is right. And what Judge Cannon needs to know is that history is going to look at this very, very carefully. These cases will be taught in law schools. These cases will be taught in history. 50 years from now, there'll be documentaries done about these cases. And there will be that judge who stands up to the mob. The mob on television. The mob in the legal community. The Democrat Party mob. And says, no, you know what we're going to do? We're going to follow the Constitution. She doesn't even have to say what I said, that Judge Trunkin is an imbecile. You're going to meet the date and you'll do the best you can and that's the way it is. Judge Trunkin knows she's going to be reversed on appeal. She knows it. But she doesn't care because that process happens after the election. Once there's a conviction and she has that in her back pocket, it's going to do great damage to Donald Trump, whether President Trump thinks it or his supporters think it or not. It will, in the minds of many, many people. You can hear the commercials now. He's a convicted criminal. He's a convicted felon running for President of the United States. That's what they want. That's why Judge Chunkin went first. That's why she seized the number one spot when she's in the number two federal spot based on what the federal prosecutors stupidly did. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Is your cell phone in desperate need of replacement? You know the signs, right? Short battery life, so you have to have a charger on hand. Crack screen that gives you glass splinters. Ouch. It's time to put that old phone to rest and upgrade to a new 5G Samsung Galaxy from Pure Talk for free. 
Get a free 5G Samsung Galaxy with two-day battery life, edge-to-edge display, and ultra-strong Gorilla Glass. When you sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, text, and 15-gig data plan for just 35 bucks a month. Plus, it comes with mobile hotspot. Get all the data you could ever need for half the price of the big carriers on America's most dependable 5G network. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just dial pound 250 and say Mark Levin for your free, super durable 5G Samsung Galaxy when you switch to Pure Talk. Dial pound 250, say Mark Levin. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Well, I want to get into another constitutional slash legal issue related to the grand juries, which we touched on the other day. So this is Constitution Day. This is Due Process Day. This is Anti-Tyranny Day. This is the day that we push back against the totalitarian Democrat Party, their judges, and their Department of Justice. At least on the understanding level that you can repeat, if you wish. Now this obviously is not in the Democrat Party Hates America, because it's, it's more recent. When you write a book, you've got to turn it in at some point, so they can edit it and publish it. But I bring this kind of thought and logic and argumentation in the entire 400 pages of the book against the corrupt, in fact, deadly and horrific Democrat Party. But what I've been discussing this past hour and a half and what we've been discussing here for many years has been the Democrat Party. I finally woke up to that fact a couple of years ago when I decided to write this book. We talk about Marxism. We talk about tyranny, totalitarianism, the destruction of our culture, the destruction of our educational system, and finally say, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody or something needs to be held to account. Held to account. What entity, political and governing entities behind all of this? It's the Democrat Party. And they're destroying our country, and they're going to destroy more of it. And if I have time in hour three, which I may not, I want to get into some more of that, whether it's drugs or the voting system and all. This is a, a radical, revolutionary movement which finds its ideology in Marxism. A tailored Marxism, an American Marxism. I wrote an entire book about it. But this is basically volume two, not about American Marxism, but about the Democrat Party and what it is doing with this ideology to the nation, what it has done to this nation, really since its founding, that is the Democrat Party's founding. But when we come back, a little more constitution. Is your cell phone in desperate need of replacement? You know the signs, right? Short battery life, so you have to have a charger on hand. Crack screen that gives you glass splinters. Ouch. It's time to put that old phone to rest and upgrade to a new 5G Samsung Galaxy from Pure Talk for free. Get a free 5G Samsung Galaxy with two-day battery life, edge-to-edge display, and ultra-strong Gorilla Glass. When you sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, text, and 15-gig data plan for just 35 bucks a month. Plus, it comes with mobile hotspot. Get all the data you could ever need for half the price of the big carriers on America's most dependable 5G network. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just dial pound 250 and say Mark Levin for your free, super durable 5G Samsung Galaxy when you switch to Pure Talk. Dial pound 250, say Mark Levin. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Mark Levin, the great one. The great one, Mark Levin. Dial in now, 877-381-3811. The second area to me of obvious abuse of power, and there are many, for which you can make emotion and and, and, and attack it even before the trial begins. It involves the grand juries. Now, I spent some time on this yesterday, but I just want to do a little refresher. Because I know this stuff can be complicated, even if I spend 90 minutes on it and move on. 
So let's spend a little bit of time, but not 90 minutes. The Fifth Amendment to your United States Constitution states in relevant part this. Ready? Quote. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime. Here's the kicker. Unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury. In other words, you're to be indicted by a grand jury of citizens, not by the prosecutor, not by the government. And haven't you heard the reporters say the grand jury brought back an indictment with 2,800 charges? Is that what happened when special counsel Jack Smith and the Biden Department of Justice violated Department of Justice rules, used a Democrat grand jury in Washington, D.C., with a Democrat motions judge, last name Hal, first name Beryl, who used to work for Patrick Leahy, appointed by Obama. Is that what happened in the documents case? A grand jury in Washington, D.C., votes to indict on matters involving events and In Florida? In West Palm Beach? Can you imagine if that is permitted by U.S. Attorney's Office, all 93 of them, and the thousands of assistant U.S. attorneys that are out there, that they're free to just pick a venue where they think they can get an indictment and then ship that indictment off to their their jurisdiction where the events occurred and basically ask that grand jury to rubber stamp it? Isn't the rule at the Department of Justice, not an opinion. Isn't the directive at the Department of Justice intended to avoid all of that? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. Don't ever listen to MSNBC or CNN for legal advice or legal information. On a nightly basis, they're committing malpractice. They just are. They have the lowest of low lives there who give commentary. Stupider than hell. Now, when this case was moved from Washington, D.C. to a Florida grand jury, all we heard was the Florida grand jury voted to approve the grand jury charges, the indictment, in Washington. It took about a week. Now, the grand jury in Washington heard testimony for over two years. They saw an endless conga line of witnesses. They looked at an enormous amount of documents. They looked at videotape. What exactly did the grand jury in Florida see or hear? What exactly was that grand jury told? Despite what some of the legal analysts may have said to you, it's not good enough to move an indictment to another jurisdiction and give it sort of a surface-level polish and then then ask the grand jury there to vote for it. That's not what the Fifth Amendment means. Did any of those grand jurors have any questions? Did any of them ask about any of the witness testimony that occurred in Washington? Again, this is why you're supposed to use the proper venue. Were there any documents that were highlighted? Any documents they asked to read? Any video they asked to see? I'm guessing no. Because it happened too fast. I'm guessing they went through the motions. There wasn't a lot of substance. The protection afforded by a fair grand jury proceeding dates back to the Magna Carta. It was adopted by British and American courts applying Blackstone's legal doctrines. Blackstone being a brilliant lawyer who wrote what's we lawyers in our Blackstone's Dictionary on the law and so many other treatises. So the notion that any grand jury would indict a ham sandwich involves cases that are more garden variety. 
unfortunately, but nonetheless. Where the law is not complex, where the violations are fairly routine, and so forth and so on. That's not this case. This is a case of first impression. The Espionage Act has never been used this way against a former president. A former president's never been indicted before. And on and on and on. This is a one-off. It's not a garden variety criminal case. Is it Judge Chunkin? Obviously this isn't her case. But the question is, what happened in that grand jury room in Florida? Now we have secrecy rules, Rule 6E on federal grand juries, but that that's only applicable while the grand jury is actually doing its business. In this case, the grand jury's business is over. So there's no harm done. If a motion is filed by defense counsel, again in Judge Cannon's court, raising the exact questions that I'm raising, based in part at least, but significant part, on how the government, the DOJ, Garland, Smith, you know, the mob, how they took all they took all the witness testimony, all the the documentary information, all of it, done in the wrong venue intentionally. The Florida grand jury didn't have the benefit of any of that. They're picking up the crumbs. Well, that's not good enough under the Fifth Amendment. We know that from past litigation, court rulings, particularly the Supreme Court. So, there's a motion there. Prosecutorial abuse of the grand jury process. That's the motion. And Jack Smith, sadly enough, has made it relatively easy to make that case. And the Supreme Court has ruled that you got to make that case before the trial begins. Because after that, you can't make the case. You're stopped. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense to raise it after the trial begins. you got to raise the fact that you were unconstitutionally indicted before the trial based on those charges takes place. And so we're at a juncture now where that needs to be done relatively quickly. That's not the only place where there was prosecutorial abuse of the grand jury process. In Georgia, you don't have to use a grand jury to bring an indictment. Prosecutor can do it him or herself under Georgia constitutional law. But If you choose to use the grand jury, it cannot just be window dressing for a prosecutor who's actually bringing the case. You have to make a choice. Now, Fannie Willis, the daughter of a Black Panther, she made a choice. It was going to be the grand jury. But something happened. The clerk of the court on the official website published the indictment with all the charges against Trump and the 18 other co-defendants early in the morning before the grand jurors even entered the courthouse, let alone voted. Well, how did that happen? Well, the clerk of the court didn't sit there and write the charges. She was handed the charges from the prosecutor's office. And she downloaded it into the system. She accidentally pushed the button that put the charges on the website. Now, having done that, the question is raised. In the room just came the smartest lawyer I know. Now she's leaving. The question is, What happened in that grand jury room? 
Did they go through the process, the kind of process I just discussed with you? That's an awfully long indictment, 98 pages and 41 charges or so. I doubt it. It would have taken an hour or two just to read the text of what was given to the clerk, to the grand jurors. But wasn't it weird at night they brought the, they announced the vote and brought the formal charges against President Trump and the other defendants? Wasn't it weird how desperate she was to get this thing done that day after the publication of the indictment? So why did she do it that way? Because she knew she blew it. The jig was up. A grand jury, in my estimation, didn't deliberate like a grand jury is supposed to. She announced not only that the grand jury had met, they took a photo, she put out their name, said ordinary citizens brought this indictment. Did they? Now, what you also have in Georgia is a wonderful opportunity for any of the defense lawyers of any of the 19 defendants. They don't have grand jury secrecy rules. Kind of weird, but they don't. Remember that idiot that was going around who'd been the foreman of the investigative grand jury and she was all over TV and one party went to court and said, Judge, you got to shut her up. He said, no, under, under Georgia law, she can do whatever she wants pretty much. So defense counsel have a golden opportunity to ask the court for the right to question a number of these grand jurors to find out what took place, to see if that grand jury indictment, quote-unquote, was in fact a grand jury indictment, or whether it was window dressing. You see, ladies and gentlemen, to me, this is legal hand-to-hand combat now. I don't need to hear from legal analysts who think that this charge is a good one. and I don't need to hear from blunderbusts like Bill Barr who, you know, this just teaches you don't screw with the government and I'll jump off that bridge when I get to I don't want to hear that crap. What's taking place here is outrageous, despite their hate for Trump. These are battles for the times, meaning for all the years this republic has left. Not just for today. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Is your cell phone in desperate need of replacement? You know the signs, right? Short battery life, so you have to have a charger on hand. Crack screen that gives you glass splinters. Ouch. It's time to put that old phone to rest and upgrade to a new 5G Samsung Galaxy from Pure Talk for free. Get a free 5G Samsung Galaxy with two-day battery life, edge-to-edge display, and ultra-strong Gorilla Glass. When you sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, text, and 15-gig data plan for just 35 bucks a month, plus it comes with mobile hotspot. Get all the data you could ever need for half the price of the big carriers on America's most dependable 5G network. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just dial pound 250 and say Mark Levin for your free, super durable 5G Samsung Galaxy when you switch to Pure Talk. Dial pound 250, say Mark Levin. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. See, when you're, an administration is corrupt, there's no limits to what it'll do. Here's an exclusive from the Federalist. Marco Cleveland, U.S. Attorney Weiss colluded with DOJ to thwart congressional questioning. Email show. The Department of Justice is an extraordinarily dangerous and corrupt institution right now. And it exists to promote the Democrat Party, to help the Democrat Party win elections, to help Joe Biden win re-election. They sought to protect Joe Biden by protecting his son. It's because you had an ethical and a real judge in Wilmington. No such judge, at least for the most part, exists in Washington, D.C., as far as I can tell. Certainly not on the Democrat side, and half the Republicans suck, too. That's what we're up against. So people are running for president on the Republican side, and they don't point this out, and they have no answers. Uh, I can't vote for them. 
because they're complete disconnect from reality. Complete disconnect. Chris Christie keeps talking about Trump. Why doesn't he talk about Jack Smith? Why doesn't he talk about Judge Trumpkin? Why doesn't he talk about the venue issue? Why doesn't he talk about the grand jury issue? Why does he... We, we understand where he stands on Trump. We want to know where he stands on liberty. The Constitution, the rule of law. So far, he doesn't stand anywhere. Very important hour remaining. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, hello, 877 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Three eight one one. How many out there are capitalists? That is, you believe in private property rights, you believe in entrepreneurship, you believe in innovation and productivity. How many of you believe that because we're capitalists, that our country has been the most prosperous on the face of the earth? How many of you believe that thanks to Capitalism as opposed to big government and socialism and so forth. We have things that no human beings have ever had on the face of the earth in the past or today. Food, you know, automobiles, homes, drugs. How many of you think that government is competent? How many of you think government creates shortages like baby formula and so forth? Energy? How many do you think the smartest minds in industry work in the bureaucracy? Well, we know hundreds of billions of dollars every year are lost by the federal government through waste, fraud, and abuse. Not particularly efficient, is it? Well, then how come so many of you want government to effectively, through the back door, take over the pharmaceutical company? Do you think they'll do better with that than they would with gasoline or food? Would you want to turn over our food production system to the Department of Agriculture? We'll starve to death. They already run immigration. How's that working out? Education, how's that working out? You know, we have the radical left, the Democrat Party, the Marxists, who don't understand economics, but they understand voting and elections. And so they do things not because they're smart, not because they're right, not because they'll work, but because the Democrat Party wants permanent power. So anything goes. But how do you explain these so-called populist conservatives? Which is oxymoronic, by the way. How do you explain that? In other words, both of them go after pharmaceutical companies. Who do they think invests in pharmaceutical companies? Your pension plans. Who do they think works for pharmaceutical companies? Your neighbors. How do they think we get these cutting-edge drugs? With the investment of billions and billions of dollars, they've been trying to find, as an example, treatment for a cure for Alzheimer's. They might be close, but this has been going on 20 years where they've been spending hundreds of billions of dollars. Usually to no avail. Now, there's a reason I'm telling you this. I want to read you a piece by Giovanni Cafario. Giovanni Cafario. Uh... I believe he's Italian. And he writes his own opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal. They don't write it, he writes it. Talks about the high cost of price controls in Eliquis and other drugs. Eliquis. You need to listen to this. 
It says, for years I visited my father in Italy. He would ask me about a drug that my company, Bristol Myers Squibb, was developing. It was an anti-clotting medication. And my father's interest was personal, even though he was a physician. He was at risk of a stroke because he had atrial fibrillation, a kind of irregular heartbeat. To contain that risk, he took warfarin to prevent the blood clots that lead to stroke. Warfarin, which was developed more than a half a century ago, isn't a perfect medicine. Too little and it won't work. Too much, the risk of bleeding complications becomes untenable. Weekly blood work and frequent physician monitoring are required with warfarin. For decades, researchers sought a better solution. Then after many decades, 1995 brought a breakthrough. Research at Bristol Myers Squibb developed a new type of blood thinner, which targets a protein involved in blood clotting called factor XA. The new approach didn't require warfarin's monitoring and dose adjustments. Early on, my father quizzed me about the clinical trials for our compound, later named Eliquis. After the FDA approved the medicine in 2012, now, it takes years typically to get FDA approval. It's not like one of these vaccines they push out the door. It can take 10 years. So after the FDA approved the medicine in 2012, he asked when it would be available in Italy, where, because of strict price controls, it wasn't reimbursed as quickly in the United States, as in the United States. It became available for reimbursement in Italy for a trial fibrillation in late 2013. Over the past 11 years, Eliquis has benefited an estimate 40 million patients worldwide. While well, Eliquis is now in the news again. It is among the first 10 medicines subject to, quote, negotiations under the Inflation Reduction Act to determine what Medicare will pay for. You see what they stuff that law with? Climate change, price controls. Now listen to me. Contrary to how it's been framed, the Inflation Reduction Act's drug pricing program doesn't involve negotiated negotiation in any ordinary sense of the word. If a drug developer disagrees with the dictate price, Our only options are to pay impossibly high penalties or withdraw our medicines from Medicare and Medicaid altogether. That's not a choice. We'd never do that to our patients. So that essentially lets the government set any price it chooses. In making matters worse, the Inflation Reduction Act will force drug makers to agree, quote-unquote, that the dictated price is the, quote, maximum fair price, unquote, no matter how unfair the price may be. Again, when you read The Democrat Party Hates America, focus on the chapter that talks about how they use language and phrases in ways that advance their cause and destroy the actual language and phrases. So they talk about agree when, in fact, there is no agreement. They talk about a maximum fair price when, in fact, it's not a fair price says the law will end up discouraging the development of oral drugs that help millions of elderly patients in the U.S. Now, why would that happen? <coughs> why would that happen? Because, ladies and gentlemen, there are price controls in Venezuela. There are price controls in Cuba. There are price controls in every totalitarian regime, which is why people are starving, which is why they don't get access to medicines, which is why there's no development of new medicines, new technologies, and new products. We don't have price controls on fuel. If we did, you'd freeze to death. You'd freeze to death in the winter and sweat to death in the summer. Price controls. The Inflation Reduction Act arbitrarily offers less protection to quote-unquote small molecule medicines, including those taken in a pill or capsule, then to large molecule injected or infused medicines, thereby penalizing the development of treatments that are more convenient for patients. You know, let's take a pill for this. There's going to be less of that now. It also targets treatments that help many older Americans, sending a signal that industry should walk away from medicines for the elderly. 
We think that's wrong. Now, he may think that's wrong, but that's going to be the consequence. Why? Let me tell you the truth. Medicare and Medicaid, they need to slash their costs because they're going bankrupt. Rather than adjust and reform the programs, they need to slash the costs. So if they can drive up, that is, discourage uh, the production of medicines, particularly for the elderly, where they become cost prohibitive because you put these profit caps on top of them. Your parents and grandparents are the ones who are going to suffer. They're not only not going to be able to get new drugs, they're not going to be able to get the drugs they're on right now. Eloquist is at the top of the government's list, not because its price is high, but rather because so many Americans on Medicare, more than 3 million, rely on it to reduce the risk of stroke and other conditions. Though frequently prescribed, Eloquist ranked 540th among Medicare Part D drugs and Medicare spending per patient in 2021. So it's a relatively inexpensive drug. But it helps millions of elderly in particular. Seniors on Medicare pay on average $55 a month for the drug. Half of all eloquent patients pay $45 or less. They're targeted because of its broad use by seniors. Remember when uh, Obama was putting in Obamacare? And remember what that crackpot brother of his chief of staff said about the death of seniors and so forth? I've told you over and again, the Democrat Party doesn't care about people. When you watch what they do, you just keep in mind, they don't care about people, they care about power. So here you have an inexpensive drug that saves the lives of people, particularly seniors, who need to thin out their blood in order, frankly, so their heart functions the way it needs to function. Makes no sense, he writes, to take a medicine that's already priced based on the value it delivers and demand even greater concessions, especially given that there's no requirement that the insurance companies that that administer Medicare will pass any new savings to the patients. I share the concerns that our current system asks seniors to pay more for medicines than for other health care expense. As an industry, we're open to reforms that address these change, uh, challenges, but the incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act are backward. We should want more effective and safer medicines, more medicines for America's seniors, more easy-to-take options. Instead, this sort of Washington regulation will force innovative biopharmaceutical companies to make gut-wrenching choices about research and investment priorities. In other words, they're not going to invest in the areas that the government's controlling because they don't want to go broke. It's like these utility companies that are not able to maintain their, their, their infrastructure because they're being forced to invest in climate change. Similar, in part, what happened in Hawaii, at least that's part of what contributed to it, And what they're saying is, we'll go broke. We can't go broke if we lose money on every pill. Because the government isn't really negotiating. They're dictating what we can charge. This is a Bernie Sanders initiative. This won't crush innovation entirely. In a couple of months, I will retire as CEO. And I know that the people working in our labs will never give up. Biopharmaceutical researchers are achieving medical breakthroughs that would have seemed like miracles a generation ago. But these steps forward aren't miracles. They're the inevitable result of a deep understanding of biology and a commitment to improving patients' lives. The question, then, isn't whether the engines of innovation America is known for throughout the world will continue. Instead, the question is whether bad policy will end up steering that innovation in ways that harm patients rather than help them. Many people are very short-sighted. Yes, I want cheaper drugs, cheap, cheap, cheap. This is a fairly cheap drug considering the benefit. There are drugs out there that are two, three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a pop. Why? Some of them are relatively new. Some of them deal with very rare diseases. You want to see where this administration is taking us? Look at Britain. They will not develop uh, medicines 
or treatments for rare diseases. They make a cost-benefit analysis based on what the bureaucrats determine is important and how the bureaucrats determine to keep the National Health Service afloat. It's a bureaucratic nightmare. So if you have a rare disease and a drug costs like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, Britain doesn't bother. Also, what they don't talk about, and they're never going to, and many of you are probably not inclined to hear this. Every single major drug co- I'm not on the drug company's payroll. I'm not running drug company ads on this program. I'm just making a point. Because I'm a capitalist, which means I believe in humanity. The drug companies collectively spend $20 billion in helping patients that can demonstrate that they truly cannot afford the drugs, that their income level is such. Now, a lot of people play the system. They lie about their income. I'm not talking about you, but a lot of people play the system. They lie about their income or they'll move assets you know, to a relative, a kid, or whatever. But the drug companies don't even really work that hard to vet that. You fill out a form. You send it in the drug company. It's signed by your doctor. It's really quite easy. I haven't done this, but I've gone through this, understanding this process in these prior debates we had on Obamacare when I've talked to these companies and I've talked to these doctors. And you get the drug for free. For as long as you can demonstrate that you need it. So that cost is built into their overhead too. So what drugs are they talking about? Eliquis, you heard. Jardins from Eli Lilly, a diabetes treatment. Um, Behringer, Engelheim, and Genevia from Merck. They made the list. Also known as Amgen's autoimmune disease treatment, Enbrel, and Tresto from Norvitis, which is used to treat heart failure. Other drugs on the list, AstraZeneca's diabetes and heart failure treatment, Farziga. The blood thinner, I can't pronounce them all, Xarelto. The blood cancer treatment, Imbruvica. And its biggest seller, Stellara and IV treatment for psoriasis and other inflammatory disorders, and the list goes on. So what you're going to see now is a tremendous shortage of these drugs. That's what you're going to see. And now a a tremendous shortage of new drugs. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Here's the deal. People aren't going to work for nothing. Whether they're farmers or ranchers, whether they're people who stock our food shelves, whether they're people who work at labs, scientists and experts, and they're not going to work for nothing. They want to raise every year. And you can't blame them. But let me ask you a question. Let's put drugs out of the way. What if the Inflation Reduction Act put caps on the price of food? Do you think there would be more food or less food? What if they put caps on how much a farmer could charge for his or her harvest? think there'd be more food or less food? How about if they put a cap on baby formula? think there'd be more baby formula or less baby formula? Now you know the answer to all this. You all live by supply and demand. You all want to earn a living wage or better if you can. Well, when the government intervenes and put caps on things, it completely destroys the entire economic methodology that we have in this country, which is the most prosperous on the face of the earth and ever has been. Mike Pepin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Uh Uh-oh, folks, Uh uh-oh. My book, as you know, comes out September 19th. That's only about three weeks away. It is three weeks away. 
Um, the Democrat Party Hates America. We've now dropped the number 64 on Amazon on pre-orders. So I want to encourage those of you who've been thinking about this, oh, I'll get it when it comes out. And so we'd certainly appreciate you jumping in. I don't know if you'll get a 40% discount when the book is released. There's no way for me to know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can tell you, if you wait too long, there is no possibility you get a first edition copy. So I want to encourage you, if you're thinking about it, thinking about it for a birthday, for a holiday, but even more than any of that, I really want you to read it. It's hard for me to convey to you uh, the nature of the book other than to use, you know, words and so forth, but I think you're going to agree with so far everybody who's gotten a pre-copy, who's given me feedback, that it is the most compelling and important book I've ever written, that it's very, very readable, and it couldn't be more timely. That's not on purpose. It just happens that way, but it could not be more timely. I don't want you to waste your money. I don't want you to waste your time. Once you get the book and read it, I think you'll say, you know what, he's right. He's right. And I want you to save money buying it. It's 40% off. It doesn't do me any good. I'm not sitting here counting the dollars anyway. It's 40% off by Amazon. And so, really, I feel, honestly, now's the time to participate in this process. Because we're going to need you. For every... Every reason I talk about on this program and on Levin TV and on Fox, every reason. Also, the ratings came in uh, for the weekend, and thanks to you, again, we were number one. All weekend, all time slots. We're not the most promoted show on our favorite cable network. Apparently, we don't need to be, because you know we're out there, and I want to thank you. So, uh, we very much appreciate that. Yeah, Labor Day is almost here, Mr. Producer. It's a weird name for a day where everybody takes off, isn't it? Shouldn't it be like, not Labor Day? You know what I mean? We're all taking off. Nobody's a labor on Labor Day. Well, there's some laborers on Labor Day. But uh, we're celebrating it on a day when we're not working. I guess that's okay. We talked about drugs. We've talked about the, what the Biden administration is doing generally. Then there's this. The Biden administration's proposed new restrictions on oil and gas companies. You see how they're shutting down the economy? It's going to be impossible to drill wells, to build pipelines, to refine fuel, to purchase cars with combustion engines. It's closing in through regulations. It's going to be impossible to heat your home in the winter, to cool your home in the summer. It's going to be brownouts and blackouts. America, I'm painting you the picture that's coming from these people. You're going to be limited on how far you can drive, where you can drive, what kind of home you can live in, national zoning, they're already telling you what home appliances you can and cannot have. Did you believe that would be the case 20 years ago, 10 years ago? Any Women are in tell us. If you're white, you're an oppressor. If you're not white, you're a victim. It's just the way it is. We don't live in a colorblind society anymore. California... Judges rule that a parents have no right, no right, if the child is being transitioned by the government. It's not the only state, not the only court. But now, actually, you know what it reminds me of, and I'm going to say it. These ideas come from the eugenics party, which was used by the Nazi and in the book, the Nazis didn't invent it. Pushed hard by the so-called progressives in the Democrat Party, all during Woodrow Wilson's presidency. Uh-huh. 
It's sick. In fact, the first book, as you'll learn in my book, that was published by the Nazis when they took over was a book that Hitler mentioned in mine when he was on by an American lawyer that for eugenics. Particularly as applies to minorities, ethnicity, cult race. Hitler, he just used it in ways that are absolutely unimaginable. The labels invented it. It was widely accepted in the so-called progressive movement and then the Democrat Party. As you'll see, widely accepted. Everybody whitewashes his and this it lays it all out. So we are going to surgically, this generation, deform our children who can't even defend themselves. And the government, this is like, in some ways, eugenics all over again. And we're just supposed to go along with, you're the heroes who stand up against this, who speak out against this. Just like you're the heroes who stand up against the Department of Justice and an FBI and a court system that's destroying our country. Not Christie, not the rest. You're the heroes who see tyranny and stand up to it, who see tyranny and speak against it. You're the heroes. Now back to the oil industry. Gene imposed new restrictions on oil and gas companies operating sparked outrage from the oil industry, which sees the move as an unjust on fuel producers that threatens to restrict U.S. energy production. They've restricted in Alaska. They've restrict, restricted offshore. They're taking out land-based drilling by the millions of acres. New lease stipulation also removed more than 6 million acres at the auction imposes speed requirements on oil and gas ships, expands protected zones, and limits the hours the vessels can operate. So they're killing us by a thousand regulations. Regulations that limit where you can drill. By the way, there's already an enormous number of limitations in place. Requirements for the speed of these big rivers very much slow them down. Increase the number of protected zones. Reduce the number of hours these vessels can operate. And they claim they're trying to protect the rare rice whale, R-I-C-E, whale. While they're killing whales all along the eastern seaboard, particularly in a city with those damn propellers, which are not only grossly ugly, they're very loud, they're killing whales, and they kill birds. But all of a sudden, we don't hear from Peter or anybody else. The industry groups argue the restrictions are unjust by current activity in the Western Gulf and unfairly singles out energy producers. Look, it's not about whales. It's not about the environment. It's about destroying the energy industry and controlling the economy. It's all about controlling you. They don't want you to have mobility. They don't want you to have cheap fuel. They're driving up the cost of dishwashers. They're driving up the cost of gas stoves. They're driving up the cost of washing machines. of ceiling fans. They've already eliminated incandescent light bulbs. Incandescent light bulbs. They just lie. They're regulating out of existence the Democrats at the state level and now the federal level, the combustion engine for crying out loud. They're pushing more and more people into very dangerous electric vehicles, which have very limited distance and require much longer charges than it takes to go to a gas station and fill it up. Now, going to destroy the pharmaceutical industry through 
through the culture and destroying us. They're going through the Constitution, free speech, administration censorship has exploded under this administration. Free speech, um, speech on college campuses, parental rights, down the list of civil liberties. If you're running for president and you don't understand this, and many of the people on that stage do not, don't waste your time talking to me. There's no way I'm going to support you. I don't care who you are. And if you have a personal thing with Trump, get the hell off the stage, because obviously you have a psychological issue. Christie has a psychological issue. It's a psycho. It's a psychological issue. He's Pavlov's dog. You say Trump, and then you go, you know, he starts slobbering all over himself. The spittle starts to show up in the corner of his rather substantial mouth and lips. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Final point. The Federalist. The Biden administration announced last Friday it plans to use U.S. taxpayer dollars to register newly naturalized citizens to vote, marking the latest attempt to use federal bureaucracies to interfere in American elections. In its Friday memo, U.S. Citizen and Immigration Service, an agency within the Department of Homeland Security, announced that it updated its policy manual to include provisions directing agents to place the quote, Increase awareness and expand access to voter registration during naturalization ceremony. So, and then they give you a voter uh, registration form, uh, which clearly is intended to register. That's why the border's open. With those Republicans pouring across the border, I've said for a decade, it will be shut down tight. The guidelines specifically direct USCIS to provide newly ordained citizens, quote, access to voter registration services, unquote. At these ceremonies and additional information, quote, regarding points of contact for voting and voter registration. Also included in the policy updated directives for the government to request local or state election officials, quote, attend ceremonies to distribute, collect, and review voter registration applicants. You know, I can't stand this crap anymore. We have a mob government right now. A Democrat Party mob government. That's what we've got. And I don't know how the hell we get past this. They've got all engines going, baby. All cylinders. Whether it's at the Department of Justice. Whether it's the voting system. Whether it's open borders. Whether it is destroying American industries in order to replace them as centralized governmental decisions. They are in full revolutionary mode. And we got Republicans on Capitol Hill that are debating whether to have at least a hearing in impeaching this bastard. He goes around the court. The court has ruled. He goes around it. He's handing out $400 billion in student loan so-called relief. Nobody says he's violating the Constitution. Nobody calls him a dictator. Every damn government document has replaced equality with equity. Every damn one of them. This guy's not running anything. He's got a Politburo of Marxists, Obamaites, Sandersite, to run everything. And they have their foot down on that pedal, that gas pedal, morning, noon, and night. All right, we salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, freedom fighters in Taiwan and Ukraine, and all of you, the greatest people on the face of the earth. It's going to take you and me and other people we know to save what's left. I'll see you tomorrow, and God bless you.